Next, you're going to scroll down and choose the default quantity. This is the default quantity that you want to have on all of your listings. It is suggested that you at least do a quantity of two. That way you can maintain a positive selling history on your items as the items sell. Also, if you're doing 30 day listings as opposed to good till canceled, this will allow your listing to stay active instead of going out of stock after every one sale or after it'll stop the listing from being ended after every single sale. Um, the other uh, thing with 30 day listings, if you have a default quantity of one and your item ends because of a sale, when SKU grid goes to relist it, it's actually going to create another entry in SKU grid uh, and that can get kind of messy for you. So really it's best to just keep it at a quantity of two or do good till cancel listings. So you enter your default quantity. The next option says update sold items to default quantity. By default, if the stock did not change, then we do not update the quantity, just the price. So approximately every 30 minutes, SKU grid is checking to see if you have made a sale on your items. If you have made a sale, then it will cost you one credit and it will increase your quantity after the sale back up to the default quantity. If you want SKU grid to perform that function for you, select yes. If you don't, select no. And it's good to have your items um, increase to the default quantity because it, it adds some scarcity to your items. You know, buyers will see in red 50% sold. Um, they'll also uh, know that you also get a positive selling history on that listing increase your sell through ratio and your overall search rank on that item. So it's very good to build a positive selling history. So you select yes or no for this option. The next option here says reprice only if the price increased by at least. This is the threshold that you want for SKU grid to take action on your item. If the supplier price increases by such and such amount, at that point you want SKU grid to make a change. Some people want changes for every penny uh, change. Uh, some people don't care about penny changes. Some people want dollar changes. So, you know, you just enter what number is comfortable for you. If you're comfortable with one to two dollar fluctuations, for example, but at three dollars, if the supplier price increases by three dollars, then you want your price increase, then you can enter that here. These are just my settings. This is not uh, a general rule. You enter what numbers are comfortable for you. The next option is to reprice only if the price increased by at least X amount of dollars. So again, for your decreases, you might want a higher threshold because you don't necessarily want your prices dropping for every single change that happens with your supplier. Also, if you do not want SKU grid to ever decrease your prices because of supplier decreases, then you can just copy these nines right here and paste that in. And because you'll never have a price decrease by, you know, this large amount, SKU grid would never ever decrease your price. So you enter whatever number you feel comfortable here. The next option is set price to be rounded to the following cents. Some people like their prices rounded. They like to see 95 cents at the end, 99 cents, 97 cents, whatever it is. SKU grid allows you to go anywhere from, you know, tenths, uh, a penny up to 99 cents or to the nearest dollar. If you do, so you just make the selection that you're comfortable with, or you can choose do not round up if you don't want SKU grid to do any rounding on your prices. The next option on the screen, do not end out of stock lots, but set the price to. This is more for people that are doing 30 day listings, not good till canceled. And with those 30 day listings, they don't want their listings to be ended. If the item goes out of stock, instead, they want to discourage buying by increasing the price to a dramatic amount. Um, this has positives and minuses. <laughs> um, you know, on the positive side, buyers, of course, are not going to buy a $10 item for $9,000. Uh, on the negative side, you may get buyers messaging you saying, hey, these prices are ridiculous. What are you doing? 
Uh, also, you will exhaust your selling limits depending on how high or low your selling limits are. If you have, you know, lots of items that are out of stock and you told SKU Grid to increase your price to a thousand dollars if the item is out of stock, then you're going to use a lot of your selling limits. So if you do not want to use this function, you leave this at zero. If you want to use this function, you enter in the price that you want SKU Grid to increase your prices to if the items go out of stock. But no, notice that the items will not end and you will eat up your selling limits pretty fast. The next option, auto update eBay stock. Choose yes or no here. This is if you want SKU Grid to control whether or not your item is active on eBay or if it's ended or out of stock. The next option, auto relist days and lots. This is for your items when they go out of stock. SKU Grid will end your listing if it's a 30 day listing. And when the list, the supplier comes back in stock, SKU Grid will relist the item and SKU Grid will update the grid with the current eBay ID so that it's tracking the right item. Note, it will not update compare item URLs. So that will be totally up to you to update. Uh, the reason being is that it, compare item URL can be used for many different functions. Not everybody uses their own eBay item link there. So SKU Grid does not update compare item URLs, which is an optional field anyway, but everything that you would need to do your repricing would be updated. Um, but again, this auto relist days and lots, this happens if the supplier goes out of stock and then back in stock. As I said before, if you're doing a 30 day listing and your item goes out of stock because of a sale, the supplier was not out of stock. You were out of stock. So when SKU Grid relists the item or it, it will create an extra entry in SKU Grid and make things a little bit messy for you. But so again, the suggestion would be to have at least a default quantity of two instead of one. Um, and if you want to use auto relist days and lots, just make sure that, um, yeah, you, you have <laughs> at least the default quantity of two. And uh, so how this will work, basically when the supplier is out of stock, your item will be ended and a new one will be relisted and SKU Grid will be tracking the right one. So you select yes or no here if you want that to happen. The next option, auto update eBay price. If you want SKU Grid to be adjusting your prices on eBay, then you select yes here. If you do not want SKU Grid to touch your prices, you select no. The reason why this is here is because some people prefer to use more algorithmic based repricers and they don't want SKU Grid to modify their pricing, but they want SKU Grid to control whether or not their items are in stock or out of stock. One more thing for you to note, when you are in, when you are using SKU Grid, if you're doing good till canceled listings, you need to make sure that in your eBay account, your out of stock option is turned on. I will show you that really quickly. Okay, here in your eBay account, what you'll want to do is go to the My eBay. You'll click on the Account tab, and underneath the Account tab, there will be a drop down that says Site. You can choose Site Preferences, or you'll see it on the left. It says Site Preferences. You'll click that link to get to your Site Preferences. If this first block here that says Site Preferences is collapsed, you'll want to click this link to show all. The first section here says selling preferences. There will be an option here that says use the out of stock option. Please, if you're using good till cancel listings, you want to make sure that this option is checked to yes. And what this means is when the quantity of your good till cancel listing reaches zero, your listing remains active, meaning it renews and we charge you the selling fees every 30 days. The listing is also hidden from search until you increase the quantity. There's a link to learn more about good till cancel listings and using the out of stock option, but you will want to make sure that this is checked and click apply. The reason for this, if you do not have the out of stock option turned on in your eBay account and you're doing good till cancel listings, SKU Grid will not be putting your out of stock items out of stock. Your listings will be ending. So the, you know, because basically in your eBay account, you've told SKU, you've told eBay, that you still want your good till canceled listings to be treated like 30 day listings. 
Um, and with good till canceled listings, uh, you're not charged every time the item goes back in stock. You're only charged once every 30 days should you keep that listing active uh, for your insertion fees. So there's quite a bit of savings there as well, as opposed to using a 30 day listing. Every time a 30 day listing ends and you relist it, that's an insertion fee for you. Um, so that's just uh, a little bit more information that you needed to know. So if you're using good till cancel listings, make sure that out of stock option is checked.